Hi homemade luxers, welcome to another month of homemade lux. I'm so excited that you're here with me. Um, today we're gonna be making this gorgeous marbled ring ditch. And what I love most about this project is that you are only limited by your imagination. You can make not only the marbled ring dishes, but you can make coasters, which make really good gifts by the way. Um, and you can make all kinds of things. You can make trays. Actually, I'm going to insert a few pictures of things that you can do. Uh, ways you can mold your bowls to make them even more unique. Or think outside the box and not even make bowls at all. So, I'm going to just have those pictures up there for you. But, I am just so excited. A few tips that I want to give to you guys before we get started. Number one, you can use parchment paper and lay it down on your table. Just use tape to tape it down on each on the four sides. And you can use that to uh, roll your clay even better as well as you can, it lends for easy cleanup when you're done. Also, when you're rolling, you could use a rolling pin or you can use my personal favorite, which is a glass. And that way you can actually see what's going on underneath while you're rolling. Thirdly, I want to make sure that you use an oven safe bowl for this project. You're going to be putting this clay on top of a bowl or inside of a bowl and you're going to be baking it in the oven. So please make sure that whatever bowl that you use says on it that it is oven safe. A Pyrex bowl would be great, but whatever bowl it is, just make sure it does say oven safe so we can be safe when we do this project. Okay guys, that should be it. Please tell your friends about homemade lux because this project is always better with friends. And also please remember to tag us on Instagram or Facebook so that we can see your projects. Or you can even email them to us so that we can see exactly what you have done. We love sharing your projects on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook. So without further ado, on to the project. Okay, so step one is to assemble your colors. I'll be showing you the watercolor, which is two pieces of turquoise, one and a half to two pieces of uh, sky blue and two pieces of white. So second step is to roll each of your pieces into snakes. It's just like you're in elementary school again. <laughs> it's kind of a stress reliever. So just roll out your snakes one at a time. The clay is already conveniently kind of perforated into sections so you know how many pieces. Um, so just go ahead and do your snakes for each piece. Next step is to combine, roll, bend in half, and repeat. So we're going to start by combining all of these different snakes into one large snake. And I'm doing this one by one, but really you can just roll all of them up together at the same time. So now you're gonna make one large snake out of all of those different little snakes. Then you're gonna bend it in half and do it again, combining them all until you see a nice water. Everything is just mixed really well. Um, I did this about five or six times, but you have to be careful not to overdo it because all your colors will be muddled. So just go ahead and just look at your clay and see if it's the right consistency. Step four is to farm a ball and then roll that ball flat. So once you get the desired marbling that you want, just roll it into a ball and use a, either a rolling pin or my personal favorite, a glass, and roll out your ball. I like using the glass because I can see through and see exactly the marbling that I am getting. Thank you. 
Once that is all rolled out to about a quarter of an inch, you're gonna place your your clay inside of a bowl to shape it. And this is where the creativity begins because you have a lot of options for this. So this is the first option that I'm gonna show you and you can mold it into your bowl. And I wanted this to be um, flat, so I am um, gonna go to cut my desired shape. Um, you could also just leave it kind of free form like that in the bowl, but I wanted to show this bowl to be just perfectly symmetrical and straight. So that's why we're using a knife to um, cut that. So you just, just grab your regular kitchen knife and do this. So you have a nice symmetrical bowl. We'll put it in the oven just like that. So here are some other options. Doing the free form bowl, like I just mentioned, which is putting it in and just leaving it like that. No cutting, no nothing. Another option is to make a circle, but kind of freeform it around there, but using a cup as a guide. And the last option is to totally freeform it. You can cut petals. You, I'm just cutting a circle, but you can cut petals like I showed you earlier. You can cut all kinds of shapes, um, whatever shape you would like. This time, instead of putting um, the clay inside of the bowl, I'm actually gonna be putting it on top of the bowl. And here's another way where you would, f where you would um, shape it into like a flute or whatever kind of, um, so you can have like ridged, ridged edges. Right now I'm gonna just place it firmly against the bowl, but you can make it just freeform the shape as, as you know, freely as you would like. Another option is to make coasters, and this really makes really good gifts. You can just use the, wider side of a cup or glass to uh, make the shape that you need and then use a knife or exacto blade to cut around that. Once you've decided on your shapes, you just put everything in the oven. Remember, it's very important that these are oven safe dishes. You're gonna be baking it on 275 degrees for 15 minutes. Take that out and let it cool and now is when you apply your glaze. You can use the included paintbrush to apply your glaze and just, um, this allows it to be, gives it a glossier finish as well as keep it protected. And the final step is to apply gold to your edges. You have rough and buff, so actually you can use your fingers for this. It's really, really easy. Or you can use the included paintbrush. Um, I think the paintbrush is a little bit more precise, but the fingers are so much fun. So <laughs> you can just pour a little bit of your rough and buff onto a plate or onto a napkin or directly onto your brush and get to work. If you're doing coasters, you can also do a little bit on the inside edge of your coaster to just give that gold a little bit more oomph. And lastly, if you're doing your bowl just around the rim of your bowl, that classic gold accent just makes the world of difference. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Please don't forget to tag us so we can see your creations. Have a great day.